For question number 13, we are going to solve and graph the solutions to this inequality, x squared plus 6x greater than 7. And this is a quadratic inequality. Just like quadratic equation, let's first make one side equal to 0. And we can easily do that by minus 7 on both sides. So 7, 7 cancels. I will have x squared plus 6x minus 7 greater than 0, like that. As usual, we'll factor this out. This is factorable, we'll factor this out. I will need x and x, and to get negative 7, and those two numbers should add up to positive 6, I will need plus 7 minus 1, like that. So, so far this is exactly the same as how you would normally solve a quadratic equation. But in this case, we have a greater than symbol right here. And let me just point out a common mistake. Uh, perhaps I will say this is a common big mistake. Big mistake. Okay. Usually at this stage, a lot of uh, students, the common mistake will be, we just write out x plus 7 is greater than 0, and the next one is x minus 1 is greater than 0, things like that. And of course, we can solve this easily. This is x greater than, subtract 7 on both sides, I get that. And plus 1 on both sides, I will get x is greater than positive 1. And now the problem is, if you really want to graph this, uh, so I have a bigger spread right here. Um, right here, this is, let's say, negative 7. Open circle, because you have a greater than sign. And this is my 1 right here. Again, open circle because I have a greater than sign. Greater than means you don't want to be equal, so it's open circle. And when you have x is greater than negative one, neg negative seven, you will typically um, shade it to the right, like that. So I see one problem right here already. Because the very moment that you say x is greater than negative seven, once you shade this line, you see, you actually have to cover positive 1 right here, right? And you just say that since x is greater than 1, 1 cannot be the answer. So this is like what we call the contradiction. This is not correct. This just doesn't work out as this, as, as how it is right here. Okay. And you can even go further. You can pick any numbers on this number line that you just drew right here, that we just drew right here. If you say, because I see I have negative 7 and 1 right here, 0 is in between, okay? If you do it like this, so you are saying x can be 0. But if you plug in 0 into the original uh, inequality, you get 0 plus 0, it's greater than 7. Once again, that doesn't make sense. So this is just a mistake. This is not the way to do it. So I'll show you guys a safe way to do it. It may not be the, uh, the shortest way, but this is a safe way to do it. So just kind of don't do this on the tests. Don't do this on the tests. This is a big mistake. OK, so what this times that, it's greater than 0. First of all, the inequality is just kind of bothering us. And here we have greater than 0. Okay. What I would like to do is, we just mentioned, when you have greater than you don't want to include those numbers. And when I have x plus 1, x plus 7, sorry, x plus 7 times x minus 1 greater than 0, that implies when you multiply x plus 7 times x minus 1, you don't want it to be 0. So I can change that to not equal to 0. And the reason I make this change is because I don't want to worry about the inequality sign right, right over there. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do my computation. Here we'll get x plus 7. It's not equal to 0. I'll put this in red to emphasize that. And here we will have x minus 1. It's not equal to 0. Just like that. And we can solve this um, inequality just like a normal equation, which you just maintain a not equal symbol. That's all. 
minus seven on both sides. First one, first one, I get x is not equal to negative seven. And the second one, after we add one on both sides, we will end up with saying x is not equal to one. Okay. And these two are the crucial points. And in fact, that's what we got over there as well. But uh, once again, just don't look at that. Don't look at that. Do it like this. These are the two crucial points. And um, usually, we also have to graph the solutions for inequalities. Let's come up with a graph right now. So get the number line ready. I have two points. And let me label these two points on my number line. I say that x is not equal to negative 7. Let me put down negative 7 right here. Okay. And since we don't want x to be negative 7, let me put an open circle on negative 7. Likewise, x is not equal to 1. Let's say 1 is right here. And once again, put an open circle right here. Okay. So uh, let me just finish this up and then perhaps I will just put on some notes later. Okay. So now we have a number line. We have three piece interval. The first one, the middle one, and the third one. We are going to pick a number in each interval, plug it into the, this um, inequality here to see if it's correct or not. If it is, you will take that interval as your solution set. Solutions, um, that solution set. Okay. So think about a number that's less than negative 7, and I bet you said negative 8. So we are going to test out, let me just put test out x is equal to negative 8. And to do that, plug in negative 8 in here. And this is just my test. So I will get negative 8 plus 7 times negative 8 plus minus 1. And do I get greater than zero? You don't need to work out the actual computation. All we care about is either it's positive or negative. Negative eight plus seven, well, this is not bad to do. It's negative one. But all we care about is a negative right here. Okay, this is negative. And negative eight minus one is negative nine, but that's also negative. And when you multiply negative times negative, do we get positive? And the answer to that is yes. Right? So this is true, because negative times negative is positive, which is greater than zero, which is true. If this turns out to be true, you can just color in this interval for your solution. Okay? This is one piece for my solution. Okay? Keeps on going to the left. And just repeat the same thing for the second and the third interval. So pick a number between negative 7 and 1. Let's try 0. So we'll check if x is equal to 0 will work or not. And let me just do the computation one more time. I'll do it uh, on the bottom right here. I will plug in 0 into the factor form of the inequality. 0 plus 7, like that. And for the second parenthesis, x is 0, minus 1, it looks like this. Okay, so 0 plus 7 is positive, positive 7. So this is positive, times 0 minus 1 is negative. Positive times a negative, do we get greater than 0? No, because positive times a negative is negative. And you see, a negative number cannot be greater than zero. This is false. So I'll just put down false. Okay. And if the test point turns out to be false, you're not going to color this part for the solution set. Okay. So this is a really safe way to do it. And now to finish this up, we just need one more. Pick a number that's greater than one. And by the way, you should always check um, all three intervals. Pick a number greater than one, I bet you'll say two. <laughs> so we can just use x is equal to two. And plug in there, 
And to save time, you can just do this in your head, pretty much. You don't need to write down all the computations. I did two already. For this time, I'm just going to write down the result. Okay? If x is equal to 2, I will get 2 plus 7, which is 9, which is positive. I can just put down positive to keep in mind. And if x is equal to 2, 2 minus 1 is equal to positive 1. So once again, it's positive. Positive times positive is greater than 0. That's correct. That's true. Right? So then, I'm just going to take this interval as my solution as well. Okay? And this is all you need to do. You see, you pretty much finish your question while you're checking the answer as well. And this is it. Okay, this is it.